And this is the section about doors, windows, and the interior of the International Home Inspection Standards of Practice course. The course is designed to teach you about the standards of practice. If you want to learn how to perform an inspection, we have courses and a certificate program that's nationally accredited by the U.S. Department of Education um, for that purpose. So we're in the doors, windows, and interior section. And again, this is a video, a supplementary video that you can play um, while you're going through the course content yourself. The most common problem that homeowners experience is water intrusion in the form of outside water penetration and plumbing leaks. So when you're doing the interior section of the home inspection, um, that's what I'm looking for. The interior doors and windows really takes me about 10 to 15 minutes for the whole house because it's basically a representative number of everything. And I'm looking at the floor, walls, and ceilings, and I'm really looking for watermarks, observed indications of water intrusion. So inside the house, home inspectors should look for signs of water intrusion or material de deterioration that may indicate underlying problems in the structural, electrical, plumbing, or HVAC system. Consider getting trained and certified in the application of infrared thermography. Why? Because it helps you perform a better inspection. Thermal imaging is an excellent tool to use in the search for water intrusion and also insulation inspections. Fortunately, InterNACHI has a nationally accredited course and training and certification program and logo that you can get um, when you become infrared certified. And it's a free online program for members. Let me take you there, see how it looks. And there's the logo. So you become infrared certified and you get a really nice certificate and we have other resources for you as well. According to the standards of practice, the inspector shall inspect a representative number. All the windows and doors? No. A representative number of doors and windows, how? By opening and closing them. Do you have to tilt them? No. Sometimes I do, but you have to open and close them. The inspector shall inspect the floors, walls, and ceilings. The inspector shall inspect stairs, steps, landings, stairways, and ramps. You have to inspect the railings, guards, and handrails, and garage vehicle doors and the operation of garage vehicle door openers using normal operating controls. The inspector shall describe a garage vehicle door as manually operated or installed with a garage door opener. It's pretty easy to do. And the inspector shall report as a need of correction in proper spacing between intermediate balusters, spindles, and rails for steps, stairways, guards, and railings. The inspector shall report as a need of correction photoelectric safety sensors that did not operate properly and any window that was obviously fogged or displayed other evidence of a broken seal. Windows and doors. Home inspectors open and close windows and doors, but not all of them. Only a representative number of windows and doors are required to be open and closed. So it's possible that a window has a defect, but it won't appear in the inspection report. How's that possible? It's because a defect must be both observed and deemed to be or considered to be a defect in order for it to be documented. If a home inspector doesn't see a defect, it's not going to be in the inspection report. A home inspector is required to report as a need of correction when a window is fogged. Some home inspectors will open one window in each bedroom, including some window features such as tilt-in sash features like this one in the inspection image. Floors, walls, and ceilings. Check the general condition of all surfaces and remember that cosmetic imperfections are not part of a home inspection. Stains, flaws, blemishes, um, a, a, a door, a bedroom door bumping into a drywall without the bumper there, causing a bump in the drywall is a cosmetic defect. It's not really part of a home inspection. In this inspection image, there are some indications that, um, observe indications of wood destroying insects at the baseboard in the corner of the carpeted living room. And this damage was caused by subterranean termites. The home inspector reported the defect, observed damage and indications of infestation. The type of insect was not identified by the home inspector on purpose. The home inspector recommended correct and further, correction and further evaluation by a licensed pesticide application and inspection company. And the home inspection is not a wood destroying organism inspection. It is not a WDO or WDI inspection. But many home inspectors will report upon observed damage, even if it's apparently damaged by an insect. 
the inspection image here is of a home inspector using a moisture probe and contacting the ceiling that has indications of prior water intrusion and water marks. The home inspector observed indications of water intrusion and made a recommendation for correction and further evaluation by a qualified contractor. The home inspection is a visual only inspection and the home inspector is not required to use a moisture probe, a meter, or a tool. A home inspector may take inspection images, such as this one, in order to help document the observed conditions of the interior at the time of the inspection. Let's go to stairs, since the inspection image was a, a staircase. Stairways are one of the most hazardous areas of a home and stair falls are often fatal. We recommend that you go over the standards and requirements of a stairway and ramp in detail so that prior to an inspection, you understand what the standards are. You should be trained enough to be able to recognize defects and report them concisely to help you gain knowledge in inspecting stairs, steps, landings, stairways, and ramps, railings, guards, and handrails Take InterNACHI's free online How to Inspect the Attic Insulation, Ventilation, and Interior course, particularly the section on egress and stairs. A few common things to look for during a home inspection are the minimum riser height being 4 inches and the maximum being 7 and 3 quarter inches, and the minimum tread depth is 10 inches. Open risers should not allow the passage of a 4 inch diameter sphere. On stairs with a total rise of 30 inches or less, the size of the open riser is not limited. The triangular area formed by the tread, riser, and guard should not allow the passage of a sphere six, to six inches in diameter. The opening at guards on the sides of stair treads should not allow the passage of a sphere four and three eighths inches in diameter. And those illustrations in the course here can be actually downloaded into your inspection report software so that the inspection report can help you uh, describe your observations. Because it's a bit complicated, those measurements. Garage doors. If you find or observe a problematic situation with the door, a garage door, you should notify the homeowner and occupants immediately and recommend them to contact the trained door system technician for consultation and repair. Why? because the garage door is typically the largest moving object in a house, and many of its components are high, under high tension. Improper installation and maintenance of a garage door and its opener can create hazardous conditions that can cause serious injury or even death. Fortunately, InterNACHI has a step-by-step -step inspection checklist for inspecting a garage door opener, and it's located within that attic insulation ventilation interior course. Standing inside the garage, but safely away from the path of the garage door. Use the remote control or wall button to close the door. As the door is closing, wave an object in the path of the photoelectric eye beam, such as a two by four. The door should automatically reverse. Some inspectors wave their foot in the path, but be careful, stay safe. Structural. Wall and ceiling cracks are usually caused by building settlement, deflection, warping of wood structural elements, or small seasonal movements of building components due, due to temperature and humidity variations. Seasonal movements will make some cracks regularly open and close. These may be filled with a flexible or paintable sealant, but otherwise cannot be effectively repaired. Cracks due to settlement, deflection, or warping can be repaired if movement has been stopped, as is often the case. Large wall and ceiling cracks may indicate structural problems. Homeowners find, often find nail pops, joint cracks, and other signs of minor cosmetic issues, such as rust stains and at fasteners or corner beads. The inspection image here is of a home inspector touching a hairline crack at the drywall's corner bead. The home inspector did not observe any indications of major structural movement during the inspection. Home inspectors should check the condition of doors and door frames, including the interior entrance doors including the interior of the entrance doors and storm doors. Check hardware for finish, wear, and proper functioning. Sticking doors or out of square frames may indicate settlement of the house, but remember a home inspector is not a structural engineer. A home inspector does not provide any engineering or architectural services. According to the standards of practice, you're not required to 
Inspect paint or wallpaper or window treatments. Inspect flooring, floor coverings or carpeting. Ins inspect central vacuum systems. You're not required to inspect for safety glazing. You're not required to inspect the security systems. You're not required to uh, evaluate the fastening of islands, countertops, cabinets, sink tops, or fixtures. You're not required to move furniture, stored items, or any other car car um, coverings such as carpeting or rugs. You're not required to move suspended ceiling tiles. You're not required to inspect or move any household appliances. You're not required to verify proper operation of any auto uh, reverse feature of the garage door. You're not required to um, operate any system or appliance or component that requires the use of special keys or codes. You're not required to operate or evaluate self-cleaning oven cycles, tilt guards or lashes or signal lights. You're not required to inspect microwave ovens not required to um, inspect elevators, not required to inspect remote controls, not required to inspect appliances, not required to inspect items not permanently installed, not required to discover firewall compromises, you're not required to inspect pools or spas or fountains, not required to determine the structural integrity or leakage of pools or spas. There's a lot you're not required to do. And that is the section of doors, windows, and interior. And there's a quiz after this. Have fun. See you in the next section.